sectioning and the abbreviations combined together. So sectioning, once again, this is in the student notes. This is part F of um, the fifth section, um, sectioning. Now, sectioning is shown in a drawing with cross hatching. So it's showing that you've cut through the material, like you cut through the metal, put it in the bandsaw and just sawed the whole thing in half. And that's what it would look like if you chopped it in half. So we've got a caster here. And if you were to take a cut right through the middle of the caster, then you look in this drawing in the middle, you'd see inside everything sliced in half. And when you slice something in half, you need to cross hatch it to indicate that the material has been is uh, cut cut away. That's the cut away areas. So anything that hasn't hasn't been cross hatched means that it doesn't that it's air that has no um, thickness. <clears throat> We've got some three different holes here, which all look exactly the same from the top, but when you're looking at the side view, um, how they get those holes is is different. We've got can of sunk, can of border, and a taper hole, all looking identical from the top view, but in the section view, you can see what those holes are in the section view. So the lines on an angle, typically 45 degrees, and they're thinner than the outline, so the outline is uh, thicker. The thickness of the hatching holes is thicker. And also, um, you, you set up the hatching lines in sort of proportion to the amount of area that you have. So if it's really big, you put the hatching lines further apart. If it's tiny, put the hatching lines closer together. If it's really small, like sheet metal, um, you can just colour it in black. Just make, it, make the hatching black. <clears throat> right, now here's an example of a part. Imagine a plane cutting through it. That plane is called the cutting plane also known as a section plane, so they both mean the same thing, cutting plane or section plane. And here, there's a pictorial illustration, and here's an actual drawing, uh, section view drawing. So this is how you portray it in a drawing. You put a cutting plane line, which looks like a, looks like a center line, but it's got arrows on it, uh, and we're calling it A and A on the other side. So if you do a cutting plane through AA, then this is what it will look like. So the section, that's the side that you're looking at what's left over, is what you see here. This, that section view is called section AA. And when you see the, the word section AA, you look on the drawing and you've got to go and find where AA is and it's related to the cutting plane. And you can have a half section as well, so you could have uh, section AA and you only, only show half of it. Uh, there's a couple of ways you could do it. You could also make the cutting plane come down here and then step out and miss the rest of the part. That way you know, you know you're only cutting that section off part. And a local cut is done sometimes to try and show a feature that's hidden inside a part. For example, showing this um, grease nipple hole to degrees a pulley or something so <clears throat> you need these two drill holes in here so they've sort of cut away but it's not really showing a cutting plane you can't illustrate a cutting plane with a curvy shape like that the curvy shape is just to give you a sort of pictorial indication that hey we've cut some material away so you can see inside there are a few rules for sectioning as well um, now, one of them is uh, watch out for hidden detail. For example, if you've got a hole behind the cutting plane there, um, you can just show a bit of a center line. Uh, you don't show a hidden detail in the section. Okay, that, that would be confusing because the hidden detail will clash with the section lines. <clears throat> so normally just show a center line behind it. Um, is screw threads. Uh, screw threads are um, pretty straightforward. Um, just watch with your hat hatching. Here's a good example of that hatching here. I said um, when they're thicker, you tend to have your hatching further apart. When it's thinner, you put them closer together. Now, what happens when you have two hatches touching each other? All right, now, often the trick there is to go to the other 45. So we're running this way, then we flip over and run the other way. So that we don't get them to clash uh, and that's what they've done here they've got hatching going one way and then 
really two plates side by side, we go reverse the hatching. And this bush here is an example of um, hatching lines in proportion to the thickness that you have. And watch out for angles too. Don't don't um, try and do 45 degree hatching all the time. You might need to find a different angle that works better. Because here we got the part at 45 degrees. You try to do 45 hatching, it looks like a bunch of ladder or something. So uh, you, you might be better off here having zero degrees for your hatching. Uh, and you can use 30 and 60 and other angles as well. There is one more um, thing to know about, and that is webs. Now, webs are not hatched because if you hatch them, you make it look like the object's completely solid, whereas the web is, is just a reinforcement. So when you're cutting through the web, you don't show the web being sectioned. That is a good example here. So uh, that web that runs up from the base plate up to the flange, uh, which is reinforcing these two sides here, the cutting plane would actually cut through the web. So you would think that you should see hatching through there. But in this particular view, they don't show the hatching because it will give you the wrong impression of how, um, of how solid their part is. All right, let's sec sec sectioning. Let's see how we go with the sectioning questions then. All right, select the correct, correct section drawing that matches the image above. So which one is it? So we have a front view. Now, now we know what the thing looks like. It's, it's like a cylindrical thing with a step in it. And then it's got a hole inside. So the front view will be looking straight at the round thing. So, and the right side is supposed to be a section view, so we should see that. So we need we need to be looking at it this way, and we'll see that. <clears throat> All right, so this would be it, except the arrows the wrong way, so that's no good. Uh, that's going to affect the front. Um, these arrows are the right way, but that's back the front. So that's the right one there. Question three, that is what a cutting plane looks like. Now, I remember I said cutting plane has two different names. It can be called a cutting plane, and it can also be called a section plane. Okay. Next question. Now we have an actual object that has a section view. This is the tail stock, obviously, um, for lathe. <clears throat> and right, so there's cutting plane. The cutting plane is shown in. So this is the front, right, top. The cutting plane is in the right view. But the actual section view is the, this is the section view here. So you could actually call this section view plane A. Section zero. Uh, so that's in the front view. An alternate way to draw this would have been you could have put the cutting plane in the top view. So I'm not sure now. Uh, how would we do that? So this would be this would then become the cutting plane. Right. Now if I'm looking at that cutting plane, that means I'm looking at it this way. Okay, so we've got two different ways to show the cutting plane here. We can put it on this view, or we can put it on the top view here.
question five, another part, this is a um, section view of the part. On top of section is this, full section, half section, so pretty simple question. Um, here's another question, is that first or third angle? Well, that's a good question, I should have put that. Okay, what's the answer to that? Is that first angle or third angle? So think about the hole. I can't get anything. So if you're looking at the end of this, you'll have this diameter. And there's nothing, no features whatsoever until we get to the small. Right, so this view is actually viewed from that side. So this is first angle. Fortunately, that's not the question. What type of section is this? Um, well, it's a full section, isn't it? Pretty straightforward. Because we're sectioning all the way through. If it was a half section, you, you'd stop your section here, usually the section top half, and the bottom half would just be the lines of the outside of the job. So that's a full section. It's a pretty easy question. Another um, section view. What's this part? Part section, this one. I don't bother put doing these in the thing, and this one is a half section. What of which of the following are not normally shown or has in the section view? Now, where does this come from? It comes from the section view rules, which is this page here. Tells you all about that page 36. The sectioning rule. So, which ones do we not normally section? Now, it could be more than one here. We don't normally section, or we don't normally show in a section view certain things. Um, do we show holes in a section view? Of course you do. If you got a hole, we, we saw a good example of that just a bit further up. A little bit, a little bit there you go. Look at that. We've got three holes. Well, they're certainly visible in the section view, aren't they? So yes, you do show holes. Now we're the ones that are not normally shown, so holes are okay, so don't pick that one. Do we show hidden detail? No, we try not to do that. That's a that's a confusing way to do it, and that's illustrated in here as a hidden detail. You don't you don't do that. See that this way they don't do it. So um, we don't normally show hidden detail, that is correct. Um, webs, do we show webs in, uh, not normally show webs, that's correct, we don't show webs. And we don't show solid material, well that's a sort of thing to say. I mean, every time there's solid material, you're showing the second view, so you can't do it. So it's webs and hidden detail we do not show in a section view. So check this one. Uh, webs and hidden detail. Yep, that's good. Question nine. So that's it for the sections. The next part will be, um, we might just stop the video here. This is um, sections done. Now we're doing symbols and abbreviations. Once again, this is straight out of the student workbook, part G of section five. Uh, starting off the drawing abbreviations. In fact, this table here on page 38 is question nine. Uh, some of these you've probably already seen. Uh, actually, the question's not there, it must be the next table. PCD, that's a very common one, pitch circle diameter. That's the, what diameter are the circles on? Like if you have a wheel, a car wheel, um, and you've got the five, five stud pattern um, but it may not fit because the pitch circle diameter of the studs might be different to your one so you've got to check not only the number of studs but what diameter are they on the pitch circle diameter of the studs 114 mil i think is 
for air this one, and they have another one for four-wheel drives so usually be bigger before they go to six. Okay, um, here we go. Pitch circle diameter, that's an easy one. That's diameter, plate, across flats, internal diameter, not to scale, countersink, center line, radius, 25, drawing, ISO, which is International Standards Organization, and outside diameter. I don't think I need to do that one. There you go. I'm not going to do that because that's getting a bit silly when you've got your know, student notes anyway. Now we're looking for the right words for each one of these. So what have we got here? That's a countersunk. Countersunk is the short word. That's the shortening of counter sunk. Um, which means it's a 45. The start of the hole has a 45, so that the screw, if you have a good screw, you get a 45 head and it fits exactly in. Alright, this is a little bit sitting up here that's called a boss. Um, we've got clearance going on in here, making sure that the bolt is clearing the hole, so the bolt has to be smaller than the hole. That is a little thing on a shaft, you would call that a collar. And what's going on here? We have a round cylinder with a lip on it which fits into a hole. That's a bush. That might be made out of brass so that the shaft will um, work better as a, with less friction um, instead of wearing out this material here. All right, now when you have a corner cut off, that's called a chamfer. Now that's the American spelling. And this is the British spelling. Shin. That's an And this one is, okay, similar to a counter, uh, counter sink, except instead of going 45, we have a little step on it like that. So this is a counter bore. A hole that doesn't go all the way through is called a blind hole. All these words, um, if you're not familiar with them, um, you have to get familiar with them because they, this is the language of engineering and machining. Okay, when you have a radius along the corner, that's called a fillet. Or it's a French word, you would actually pronounce it fillet if you were French. There you go. What do you call a hole that this thing goes into? That would be called a recess. Could actually be called a hole as well, but anyway. Uh, eight holes on pitch circle diameter, it looks like we're going here, pitch circle diameter. And this is a uh, this is a round. So fillet is the internal, and this would be a round. Um, What's happening here is individual items. So you're doing fabrication going on here, I think. I'm not sure what word we're after here. We're fabricating. Um, flange, that, that's a piece of pipe here, and the, the plate that you uh, bolt your pipes together with is called flange. And this is a eccentric. It was meant to be off center. Still matching words here. Um, well, that would be a through hole, wouldn't it? It's going all the way through. All right, now now we're referring to the bit that sticks out, not the recess, which is this one here. This is called a spigot. That's the little piece of shaft that fits into the hole. Uh, well, I think that would be just a shaft. Very simple one. That's a spline, so that is to can, um, carry torque from one shaft to the other. That is a shoulder. Now you can have a shoulder on a flat thing, or you can have a shoulder on a round thing. So you can make a shoulder on a lathe or a mill. These are various types of taper. You can have a taper. Once again, on the flat or on the round, and tape on the round would be a um, cone shape. 
and this is a tapped hole. So tapped means it's got a thread on it. <clears throat> and it says on this picture, it actually says M8 by 20. That means metric thread. And metric, you have to see. And the diameter of the thread is 8 mil. So if you're looking at the thread itself, there's your bolt. The diameter is that, the 8 mil. And the length up to the bottom of the head is 20 mil. Alright, still doing some more matching. What is part A? Part A is a spoke. And that is a short step. Step here. Part C is the rim. Okay, that's a spot for this. Part A is the well, B is the hump. A is the spoke. And that is a web. Alright, just for a bit of fun, let's have a look at a drawing of a gearbox. By the way, what type of drawing is this? Drawing tile. Now, we did this uh, in quiz number one of this subject. But what type of drawing would you call this? Well, it's a detailed. Detailed means it has enough dimensions to make it. But it's also an assembly drawing, so it's a detailed assembly drawing. Which is fairly uncommon for something like this. Um, we normally have an assembly drawing of how it goes together, and then you have part drawings for each of the components. Um, but they've crunched them all together and thrown it all in one drawing here, which makes for a busy drawing. The other thing you notice is that it is in inches. As soon as you see things like eight and quarter and thirty two and stuff, then boom, you know that it's inches for sure. So it's probably American or oh, it's very old. Uh, and what is it anyway? Well, this is a gearbox. The way it works is you have an input on the input side, which is this side, which is in, and has an output on that side. So the motor's driving this one, spinning at a certain speed, and then this shaft doesn't continue. There's a cut between the two, so one fits inside the other. Um, well, it's not there. There, you go. That shaft goes up to here, and then the, this shaft goes around the outside of it. So it comes along here, there's a spline here which drives this gear, which you can slide. And when you slide it across to here, it engages with this gear. So then it drives down through that gear and has a gear down ratio, because this is small to big, so this is going slower. And this, this drives this gear, which is small to big again, so it goes even slower, onto this shaft and drives this outside shaft at low speed. So this is low, when you push the lever this way, you push the cog to the left, push the lever to the right, cog goes to the left, you have low speed. Now push it the other way, what will happen is that this will lock into this, so that locks into that. So let's go straight through one to one. So we run to one speed and then probably um, look like about half speed um, when it's and you put the lever the other way and put the lever in the middle the way it is now it will be neutral nothing not connected all right this is the following is not sectioned in the above drawing so this is a section view drawing what is not sectioned so i mean you'll know because it doesn't have any hatching on so you just took the things that have been hatched that's sectioned but there's no hatching it ain't sectioned the hex cap screw sump plug. So there we go, that's our hex cap screw. There's the actual name there. Hex cap screw. Makes sense. Right, that's that thing there. And is not it is not section. Which of the following are not sections? So that's one of them. The reduction gear. Now this is the reduction gear, this one here. 
So that's not sectioned as well, that's correct. The shift handle, that's the shift handle up here, right at the very top. Um, I can see cross, cross sectioning through that shift handle, so the gear knob at the top is sectioned, but it's not one of them. Fastening bolts for the shift yoke assembly, right, so the shift yoke assembly is this gizmo here. Good. And the fastening bolts are these fellows here, and they are not sectioned. You don't normally section a bolt because we all know what a bolt is, don't need to look inside a bolt. So the fastening bolts are not sectioned. If you're looking for them, not sectioned, don't forget. Not. The drive gear. Right, this is the drive gear here, and it's definitely sectioned. The shift yoke shaft. Right, this is the shift yoke, and the shaft in the shift yoke, which is this shaft here, and that is not sectioned. All right, so it's showing an unsectioned view. That's quite common for the shaft to not be sectioned, like here. You don't see it sectioned, but then you do a partial section uh, to show a little keyway on that there. Uh, but it's not sectioned all the way through. But this one is sectioned, so you can see through it. So the shaft, the shift yoke shaft is not sectioned. And the bearings, where's the bearing? There's one right there. Looks like it's sectioned to me. I can see the balls in it. So uh, they are sectioned. Oh, last question then. Eh? Cool. Let's see how we went. Expert reduction gear. Passing and shift gear. And we got four months. Good, done. That's quiz number six.